Mechanical advantage is the key to being a more productive carpenter. And not just carpenter, but really any other aspect of productivity and mechanics. You've just got to have a handle on mechanical advantage and specifically leverage, the application of leverage. Now Aristotle is famously quoted as saying something like, give me a long enough lever and a fulcrum to put it on and I'll move the world. And he wasn't wrong. In theory, at least, you can get a lever long enough to lift and to move almost anything. And not only can you move things, but you can change yourself from a person that just works hard to a person that works smart and thereby is more productive. I want to show you the levers, the pry bars, the crowbars that are almost always found in my truck unless I left them at the shop or left them on the job. And the reason I want to show you this is because you, perhaps like me, plan on working into your 80s. I'm 64. I've got to have at least 16 years left in me. And if I want to do any heavy work, I've got to always have a pry bar of some kind with me. The pry bar that I use the least is this. This is a digging bar. It is specifically for driving down into a post hole to do what is usually done with a pick three or four feet in the ground and then be able to pry the rocks out of the bottom. If you're doing a pole barn and you've buried an eight by eight, 22 feet long in a four foot hole, this will get you to the bottom and give you a chance of nudging it over to get it in line. It'll peel off the side of a hole, but you can also use it just as a straight lifting bar. If you throw another fulcrum underneath the end of that, get a purchase under I don't know, the corner of a lathe or something heavy, that's going to come up. You, you push down on that and it's heavy enough on that end that just the weight of the bar is going to provide a serious amount of uplift right there. The next bar that is perhaps least used but sometimes exactly right is this beauty. I call that a gorilla bar. That was a proprietary name for somebody who made a bar like this, I think in the 70s. This one actually has rough neck on it. But the idea is a curving bit, a curving foot, and that gooseneck thing, which is way better than a traditional crowbar shape. It's just, it's handy for a lot of things. This bar would be something that you would carry in sort of an all-purpose situation. It'll fit in a toolbox, and it'll do a little heavy work, and it'll do a little light work. There are other bars that will do a particular task perhaps better, but it's just kind of an all around and it's small enough to be able to take into you know, a fairly refined environment and do some kind of heavy work. It has the advantage of being able to you know, strike a blow. That sometimes is useful and it's comfortable in the hands. So I don't use this that often, but there are cases when it's exactly the right thing. The next bar that I use seldom, but is almost irreplaceable when I need it, is this dig out bar. This is old. Now you can still buy these things. This one is uh, a number 56 Sure Grip made in the US Crescent, good old Crescent. And the idea is that you put those bits on each side of a nail head and then use a sliding handle to jar it down into the wood until you can close the jaws and pry a nail out. It's magic. It destroys the work less than a cat's paw and it will pull a seriously long nail if you need to, as well as getting a hold on the head of a finish nail. So you ought to have one of these in your box, and you can usually find them at hardware stores or secondhand stores if you look. This is really only useful in a refined or a sort of a gentle demolition situation. You've got, you've got a door jam, or there is a door jam, or a piece of baseboard, or a fascia board, or something that you want to reuse, and you just have to extract a nail, and you can't get behind it to pry the whole board off, and you can afford to dig a little hole, really no bigger than the head of the nail itself. So in sort of a gentle, more finished work demolition situation, you gotta have one of these, and almost nowhere else. There's nothing you can do with this except pull out one nail at a time surgically. So the beauty of this is that in, um, tearing apart or adjusting or removing something where the nails have been countersunk. Either they're put in with a nail gun and they're put in below the surface, or if it's older, if a nail set has been used to countersink, 
and there's just no way to get a hold of it, and you just can't send the tip of your dikes down in there, you're trying to tap on the end of your dikes to get in and get purchase, this is a tool. It will go subterranean, right? It will go below the surface, get a purchase, and pull out. A door bar, a flat bar. Pretty self-evident, right? I mean, you can use this for lifting sheetrock up, you know, to get that bottom board up against the top one. You can use this, slide it back into a door jam and pry. You can slide this up under shingles. If you've got to do a roof repair, it'll sneak back in there and pry things up. And it'll also pull a decent nail. But what you run into is there's enough flex in that thin handle that it is pretty much just for smaller nail applications. But sometimes it's exactly right. I mentioned raising the bottom run of sheetrock. Boom. It's also ideal for raising a door. Sometimes you can put that under the edge of a door, reach out with the toe of your boot, push down on this end to raise the door enough to maybe you know, push a hinge into better alignment, or you can put it under the door and kind of walk it like this to move the door laterally while you're holding it up. See that, you can walk things sideways with that kind of an action. In finish work, you can use this to provide shelter or protection for a tough pull with a bigger bar. You see that? It spreads out the load of a bigger pry across a wider surface area on a surface that you don't want to damage. So that's a couple applications. And then like I said, if you've got to slip in, maybe you've got a remodel and you're putting in a bathroom and you want to run a vent out through an existing roof and it's three tab or a, an architectural asphalt shingle, you can slide up under the shingles and pop the nails or the staples loose up under there a ways and then pull them out. So this facilitates, you know, it'll pull up tack strip, it'll pull up all kinds of things, and you can have the reverse application of leverage by lifting and having the fulcrum out on the end with that little nail bar. So mostly interior work and roof repairs are what I think of when I think of a door bar. We're getting up into the money department now, and that is a cat's paw will make you money or save you money or get you out of a jam if you put a nail in the wrong spot. You can carry it in your bags if you need to and it's got both a sheep's foot that's driven in with impact and the cat's paw itself if you've got to dig deep and tear something out and you don't care about the collateral damage, you just care about getting the nail out. Cat's paws, and if you can find it, find it with the sheep's foot on the other end. A cat's paw is a demolition tool. It is for tearing things apart. It's light enough you can have it in your bag and it becomes a shim. Can you see that you can drive, if you've got to pull out, if you've got a door header in the wrong spot or you've got, to, you've got to pry a trimmer off an opening, this is a shim in your bags that you can really abuse and drive into an opening and spread it apart. You can also scoop a nail out and if you want to dig really deep or really hurt something badly, if, you, if, you, if a nail broke off you can drive this down three quarters of an inch below what's left of the surface and have a chance at least of getting purchased. And we finally come to what you probably have already been anticipating is my go-to tool in most cases. Because this beauty will do most of what any of those other bars will do with the exception of the dig-out bar and the cat's paw, and it's a Burke bar. I probably use this probably five times a week, sometimes five times a day. There's nothing like it, and if you haven't understood the utility of a Burke bar, borrow one. Stop on a job site and say, hey, there's this nut on YouTube who says this is a go-to tool. Let me pick that up, and as soon as you get it in your hand, you realize that if it doesn't hurt you, it's going to get the work done. So a Burke bar is essentially a giant door bar. Look at this. I mean, can you see the similarity in these bits? and in exactly the same way that you can put that under a door or a piece of sheetrock and push down on it with your foot. You can put this under a door or a piece of sheetrock and let the weight of the tool do the work for you. It'll stand there and hold a, a significant load. See, I can, I, I'm pushing down maybe 70 or 80 pounds right there. That's handy when you're working by yourself. So whether you need to strip concrete forms, or pry a 3,000 pound lathe up off the ground or a 2,700 pound table saw for that matter. Or if you have to situate a tilt panel, if you're raising tilt up concrete panels and you and two or three other guys need to work one sideways while the crane's holding the load. Or whether you need to reach up and pull some upper cabinets off in a kitchen remodel. Or 
whether you need to tear out a header or you need to lift, if, it doesn't matter. If you need leverage, if you need the mechanical advantage of a lever, if you need to move the world, you gotta have a Burke bar because it is way easier to itemize the things that a Burke bar will not do than the things that it will do. Those are the ways that I apply leverage, which is the foundation of mechanical advantage. And it's something that you have to use and think about and be looking for opportunities to use so that when the time comes, you'll be the guy that can get the work done. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.